Are we ready? Good afternoon. Welcome to the, on behalf of the region of Waterloo. Did we start yet, Carl? Yes, you're live. Oh, shoot. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sophia Stanbury. I'll be one of your co-hosts today. We'd like to welcome you to the region of Waterloo's um, Black History Celebration wrap up. This event is being brought to you by the Equity, Inclusion and Human Rights Unit and has been supported by the Black History Committee um, as part of our, um, our Equity and Diversity Inclusion Working Group. Um, we will, I like at this time, Seda Ali will be doing our territorial acknowledgement. Seda. Begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather today is a land traditionally used by the Haudenosaunee, Ashinaabe, and neutral people. I would also like to acknowledge the enduring presence and deep traditional knowledge and philosophies of the Indigenous people with whom we share this land today. Thank you. Thank you for that, Seda. So as you guys will notice um, throughout this presentation, you will see members of the Black History Committee wearing black. And I'm going to explain to you why that is. In the Western or European context, blacks, black has a negative connotation and is usually associated with death, evil, darkness, etc. Whereas white is associated with purity, virtue, joy. As a result of the negative connotations associated with the color black, some people do not want to be associated with anything black. However, in our African cultures, the color black represents strength, power, dignity, and sophistication, and the white and white representing negative connotations such as death. Before we go into the program, we would like to uh, sing Lift Every Voice, which is a common, which is the well-known black national anthem. Before we do that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the artist. So Lorraine Harris, she wasn't able to be here uh, with us today because she's an educator, but she made a, a video for us uh, specifically for the region. So Lorraine Harris migrated to Canada from Jamaica at the age of eight. She overcame spinal meningitis and defied all medical odds to achieve medical academic and creative success. Lorraine is a mother, wife and teacher educator and holds degrees in classical music, psychology and education. Lorraine's first album, Knock, was featured across Canada and, T and CTV's breakfast television, on radio and in newspapers across Canada. Her musical capabilities has allowed her to branch out to theater, resulting in a small lead in the musical Bubbling Brown Sugar and landing her the lead role of Sierra in Ragtime in 2014. Lorraine has received a number of accolades and awards in recognition of her talent and communication, community service. Some of Lorraine's awards include the Maja Award nominee, Singer Songwriter of the Year in 2009, the Unsung Hero Badge of Honor um, of Music in, 20, in 2011, the Western Ontario Drama League Award in 2015, the Ontario Volunteer Service Award recipient in 2020, and the creation of My Place in This World, which is a virtual Black heritage educational curriculum that she created and developed in 2021. You can reach uh, Lorraine Harris um, if you want to book her at bookings at lorraineharrismusic.com. At this time, let us stay in silence as we hear Lift Every Voice.
Sophia, it's not playing. Is that Carl? No, this is Rahan. Carl is supposed to be playing it. Okay, skip to the next thing. We don't have this. Okay. Maybe we can come back and play at the end, Carl. Okay. We'll go ahead to the next thing. So we're having some def technical difficulty. So we'll come back to Lift Every Voice. At this time, we're gonna have our CAO, Bruce Lautner, and he will be um, giving us a message from his office. Thank you, Sophia. I really appreciate being here and uh, welcome to everybody who's, uh, who's watching. Um, despite a presence in Canada that dates back to the early 1600s with the arrival of Matthew da Costa, people of African descent are often absent from Canadian history books. Very few Canadians are aware of the fact that some of the loyalists who came to Canada after the American Revolution and settled in the Maritimes were people of African descent, or of how those who fought enslavement helped to lay the foundation of Canada's diverse and inclusive community. Black History Month is a time for all Canadians to learn about the many important achievements and contributions of people of African descent in shaping Canada's growth and development, both past and present. For this reason, the region has developed a dedicated webpage for Black History Month. It encourages the community to learn about and honor the important contributions African, Black and Caribbean Canadians have made to our country. The region's also promoted community and region-led events on a variety of social media platforms. And I wanna thank the Canadian group for, for making this available. I know that I have gone on the webpage uh, myself many, many times and learned a lot about, uh, about African, Black and Caribbean Canadians and really appreciate the opportunity. The recognition of Black History Month is even more significant given the events of the past year, including the death of George Floyd and the demonstrations this year on Capitol Hill. This reminds us that we cannot take for granted, but must work to ensure democracy, equality, and fair treatment for all. These incidents speak to the importance of addressing racial discrimination for Black, Indigenous, and racialized community members and social injustice for all. Addressing systemic racism will foster relationships built on trust and restore faith in government services and systems while bringing about much needed healing and reconciliation. The region of Waterloo has taken the following actions to address racial intolerance. We've created an equity, inclusion and human rights unit aimed at a just, equitable and accessible region where all people can reach their full potential. We've created an anti-racism advisory working group that will provide recommendations and advice and information directly to regional council. This includes the development and implementation of an anti-racism plan to address systemic racism within the workplace and within regional services. We've created an equity, diversity and inclusion staff working group. And I've had a chance to go there and over 90 staff um, in the meeting I was in and allies um, have been involved to identify key corporate initiatives to support equity and inclusion for all and support the region's multi-year diversity, accessibility and inclusion plan. We've also continued to address the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to action number 57. And this involves educating regional staff about the history of First Nations, Métis and Inuit people, including the history and legacy of residential schools, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, treaties and Indigenous rights, Indigenous law and the Indigenous Crown relations. We've also rolled this out to council and to area elected officials. We continue to support our First Nations, Métis and Inuit committee. As a region, I know, and we all know, that this is just the start, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And we have a lot of work to do in addressing systemic racism, our systemic inequities and achieving so social equality. And the committees and working groups that I mentioned that have begun, we're going to see concrete actions that have meaningful impact for racialized and other marginalized communities. And that's the most, most important thing conversation and then concrete follow-up and implementation. I know many members of council have joined us as well 
um, and Chair Redmond, some on this call on the screen today, and some are watching live. And uh, I know that uh, I and Council are committed to this as we continue to grow and evolve as individuals and as an organization. All of Council, all of the leadership team, um, and all of staff, certainly, we commit to respond to the needs of all citizens in our community, not only this year, but in the years ahead. Thanks very much, Sophia. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Hi, I'm Sharon Maskell, and I am a supervisor with Home Child Care. Um, it's truly an honor to be part of this Black History celebration. The poem that I'm going to read speaks to empowering the Black child to achieve their dreams. There is hope, strength, and promise. They are their future. Hey, Black Child was written by Yuseni Eugene Perkins. Hey, Black Child, do you know who you are? Who you really are? Do you know you can be what you want to be if you try to be what you can be? Hey, Black Child, do you know where you're going? Where you are really going? Do you know you can learn what you want to learn if you try to learn what you can learn? Hey, Black Child, do you know you are strong? I mean, really, really <coughs> strong. Do you know you can do what you want to do if you try to do what you can do? Hey, Black Child, be what you can be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you can do. And tomorrow, your nation will be what you want it to be. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is Seda. I'm a caseworker here at the region. And I just want to speak on the importance of celebrating Black history. It is important that we celebrate and acknowledge the rich Black heritage and history because as a wider community, in order to bring that sense of unity, the sense of community and belonging, it is vital that we share our stories, history, cultures, our languages, all the things that make us who we are. The sharing of that information to the wider community not only destroys the myths, biases, fear and suspicion that the black community tends to experience, but it also unifies all of us in that it shows us we're one community, we're one people. At the end of the day, it helps us sympathize and empathize with each other's struggles and shortcomings. We're able to see ourselves and our children in each other. Black History Month should serve as an example to all other communities, the significance in sharing their stories and history to bring us all closer together so that we can help each other make a better, more cohesive, vibrant society for all of us. And in highlighting this year's Black History Month theme, The Future Is Now, I would like to leave you with the words of none other than the great late Malcolm X. The future belongs to those who prepare for it today. The future is now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Seda, for that. That's very inspiring, very empowering for all of us. Next, I'd like to introduce our, um, we have a musical guest with us. We have Carlos Morgan. So Carlos is born of Jamaican descent. Um, soul rock, he's a soul rock music owner, CEO and recording artist. Carlos is a multi-award multi winning singer, songwriter, vocalist, recording artist, performer, music and show producer, actor, vocal performance coach, and social justice music educator. Carlos holds a master's degree in community music and is actively involved in community initiatives such as the Hymn of Freedom Project, which is a community project coordinated by Loris DaCosta in partnership with the Kitchener Waterloo Multicultural Center Black, and, and sorry, and highlights Black history in Canada. He is the co-chair of the, sorry, the steer, sorry, he's co-chair of the steering committee for the music of Brown, Male Brown Music Festival, sorry. Um, Morgan's debut album, Feeling All Right, went on to garner the Juno Award for Best R&B Vocal R and Recording. He is a two times Canadian Urban Music Award recipient, best in the category of Best Vocal Vocalist and Best R&B Slash Soul Video. 
Much Midget video, video Award winner for the Best R&B and Soul Video Soul Cam Music Award and two-time Canadian Who's Who and two-times Canadian Culture Committee Award recipient. Morgan was inducted in the 2001-2002 Canadian Who's Who, and he has received many awards throughout his career, including the Gold Medal Veil vale Moke Vocalist Award for his song, Sweet As You Are. It is my pleasure to welcome Juno Award-winning artist, Carlos Morgan. Hey, everybody, can y'all hear me? Yes. Y'all can hear me? Yes, we can hear All you. Right. Oh, good, good, good. It's a pleasure for me to be here to uh, be part of this uh, Black History Month for Waterloo Region. I wanna thank Sophia Stanberry for inviting me. Um, I'm gonna perform a couple of songs when I have currently out. Um, it's called Have a Little Faith. And as we celebrate Black History Month, and not just for the month of February, but all year, because Black history, in my opinion, Black history is human history. Um, and so I want to dedicate this song to the Black history that, uh, to the Black community, excuse me, worldwide, but in this setting, in this present place right now, that as we, as Black people who face daily onslaughts of racism and, and discrimination and discrimination and bigotry, um, um, that I, I personally, for myself, and I think I could speak for many people in the Black community, when we are constantly bombarded and faced with um, racist, um, discriminatory actions and behaviors and policies and practices in all aspects of life, it can, it can feel weighted down on us. And we need whatever um, source of faith or strength to, for us to keep fighting, for us to keep believing, fighting for ourselves, for our family, for our people, for our community, for the black diaspora on a whole. So I'm gonna dedicate this song uh, called Have a Little Faith. Yeah. Have a little faith. Yeah, yeah. Listen. And the hardest part of Living through this moment is the wreckage left behind. Mm -hmm. Going round in circles, every second hurts so much, there is nowhere left to hide. Yeah, and all this pain. I threw away. So what happens now? Mm -hmm. It takes a little faith to get back up. Takes a little heart to let you love yourself. It's a Takes a little time to just let go. Open up your eyes and then you know it'll be alright. It's gonna be alright if you have a little faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a little faith. Oh, yeah. And the hardest part of holding on for too long is the truth I never say. Oh, yeah. And the only reason that I keep falling, it's so old and hard to change. And all this pain, I go away. So what happens now? Oh yeah, takes a little faith to get back up. Takes a little heart to let you love yourself inside. Oh yeah. Takes a little time to just let go. Open up your eyes and then you know it'll be alright. 
It's gonna be alright. Have a little faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a little faith. Oh, yeah, yeah. So save me from this complicated love. Takes a little faith to get back up. Takes a little heart to let you love yourself inside. Yeah, oh. Takes a little time to just let go. Open up your eyes and then you'll know it'll be alright. Yeah, have a little faith. Oh yeah, yeah. Have a little faith. Oh yeah. It's gonna be alright, people. Just have a little faith. All right, that was have a little faith. <laughs> um, this next song I want to perform, and I know everybody knows it's the classic soul song from the late great Bill Weathers. And I want to see everybody in the panel, Seda, Cheryl. Carl, I know you're hiding, Veronica, Sophia, and everybody that's listening, I want y'all to sing along and clap your hands. This is a classic song by Bill Withers. And again, to the black community, we gotta support one another, love one another. And as Bill Withers say, says, we gotta lean on one another, lean on, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Sometimes we are not We all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lead on me when you're next to I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry your own for it won't be long. Yeah, I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Swallow your pride if I am thin. You need to. No one can give those of your need that you can let show to lean on me. Oh, yeah. When you're not strong, yeah, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry your heart. It won't be long. Till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. You just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We only need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We only need somebody to lean on, lean on me. When you're not strong, yeah, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry your nose forward. It's for the Lord. I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Yeah! Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
They're gonna lean on each other. Sisters and brothers, yeah. Let's lean on each other, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one more time. You just call on me, brother. When you need a hand, we only need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you understand. We only need somebody to lean on, to lean on me. Uh, when you're not strong, yeah, I'll be your friend. Yeah. I'll help you carry on for what it won't be long. Yeah. Somebody to lean on. Uh, you don't need somebody to lean on. But the sisters who you need to lean on. Black people, we need to, to lean on. All over the world, we don't need somebody to lean on. We don't need. I'm going to do like we used to do in the 70s when you had to take the record off. Or we had to turn the radio. Remember back in the 70s when we had to lift the needle off the record? Or our parents would say, Hey, go on, go turn down the record and turn down the stereo with your hands. You remember that? You remember that? So we we'll explain it out. To lean on, you need somebody to lean on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for singing along, everybody. <laughs> so feels needed. Sophia, you're on mute. Sorry. That was wonderful, Carlos. As I was reflecting, when I was thinking about Black history, I was reminded of slavery and I'm brought back to my ancestors. Based on my features, et cetera, it is believed that my ancestors were from Ghana. I strongly believe that in order to know where one is going, one needs to know where they are from. So I often draw from my Ghanaian culture inform my worldview and ground me. To me, this year's Black History theme, The Future Is Now, immediately draws me to the Sankofa, the symbol of the Sankofa. The Sankofa symbol is one of many popular symbols in the collection of Adinkra symbols attributed to the Akan people of Ghana. The Sankofa, translated from the Twi language to English, means to return and get it. San translates to return, Ko translates to go and fall translates to look, seek, and take. This symbol illustrates the importance of our of past lessons in shaping the future. The Sankofa is depicted by a bird flying with its head facing backward, a valuable egg representing the future, it's in its beak and its legs facing forward. The Sankofa teaches that to record successes and move forward, we have to return to our roots. Hence, gathering good lessons, learning in our, in our past, and using them to achieve future goals. The Sankofa bird also demonstrates the importance of family, as most of the lessons that form the foundation of one's life are learned at home or among a group of people that are regarded as family. It teaches that whatever we have foregone, lost, been stripped of, or forgotten can be retrieved, reclaimed, preserved in order to, pre to prevail. With that, I dedicate this poem that I wrote to our black youth entitled, Your Future Is Now. You are born with the blood of resistance running through your veins. Your ancestors fought for freedom for your children's children. Let not their warrior spirit be in vain. They fought so that you could have a better life. One free from slave ships and the sting of slave master's whips. 
You are the Sankofa flying high. Look back into the past, take what you must, make preparation for what lies ahead. Protect your egg of potential and endless possibilities for your future. Your ancestors have equipped you with heart and perseverance. Don't believe their propaganda, don't believe their lies. Young black women, you are more than your breasts, butt and thighs. Black men, young black men, your legacy is more than the spreading of your seed. Your ancestors have survived slavery. You have what it takes to succeed. Your future is now, not yesterday or tomorrow. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Veronica Richards. I'm case aide in the Community Services Department. I'm very pleased to be participating in the region of Waterloo's first Black History Month celebration. Given the cultural diversity of our community, the region of Waterloo has taken a huge step in the advancement of equity, diversity, and inclusivity, which is to be commended. It is important that we recognize and celebrate the various groups which makes up the fabric of this community. As the theme of this year's Black History Month suggests, the future is now. This indicates that the region of Waterloo is heading in the right direction by setting a foundational standard for generations to come. Well done, region of Waterloo. I just calmed down to the door. I would like to share a poem. Uh, Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. Just a mom bring a parcel. Oh, what else could I say? Oh. Veronica, you're muted. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. I'll start my poem again, I'm sorry. Oh. Still I Rise by oh, Maya no. Angelou. No, you may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like the moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like the springs springing high, still I'll rise. Did you wanna see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me down with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slaves. I rise, I rise, I rise. So we heard before from Carlos and we had words come out such as powerful, awesome, energy, amazing, incredible. Once again, we'd like to have Carlos come back and do some more songs for us. But I also want to mention that you can um, check out Carlos's website at www.carlosmorganmusic.com. 
Take it away, Carlos. Thank you. Uh, this next song, uh, the next two songs I'm going to perform. The, the next two songs I'm going to perform. One is from my um, my first album that I won the Juno Award for for Best R&B Soul Recording, which you can all still support. I'd like to say, um, I'm asking everyone to please support um, Black music in Canada, um, Black artists, singer songwriters, producers. Um, there are so many gifted and talented artists <clears throat> in R&B, soul, jazz, reggae, hip hop, uh, soul, um, blues, um, from Africa, um, from South America, from all over the world that is here in this country and we, and the lack and the support um, is not as, uh, as, as there for black music in this country as it is for other styles and genres of music. So. I'm asking everyone who's listening to please support Black music. Please purchase, download, stream, buy the merchandise, and um, because we really are grateful for the support that we receive from our from the uh, listeners of music and lovers of music in Canada. So, um, as I said, this first song is from my Juno Award-winning album called "Feeling All Right," and I hope everybody's feeling all right. And thank you all for tuning in and listening, and I hope you enjoy the song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sitting in my bedroom, thinking of the times you and I share. Yeah, yeah. I'm fantasizing of your love and your touch. Oh, girl, I love you so much. Girl, girl, yeah. You put a song in my heart and a smile on my face every time I'm with you. Baby, yeah. I'm never gonna love nobody else. I wanna share my life with you. You're an angel from the heavens. You make my dreams come true. You are on my hopes. You're on my dreams. You give me strength to keep going on. I'm feeling alright. Everything I do, I do for you. I'm gonna love you a whole life long. Yeah, I'm feeling alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I will never resist you, cause when you call for me, I'm gonna be there. Yeah. So girl, just take me by the hand yeah. Whenever you need a shoulder to cry on I just know I'll be there Cause I'm gonna be your man, yeah You're my sweet rose of Sharon My sunny's cousin, my rainy day Everything you do, girl, is so amazing Oh, I love all your ways You wear my name so much beauty Exuberance burgeons through Your love is like a clarion Brilliantly clearly true You are all my hopes, all my dreams You give me strength to keep going on I'm feeling alright, yeah Everything I do, I'll do for you I'm gonna love you my whole life long, yeah one more time, one more time now. You're on my hopes, on my dreams. You give me strength to keep going on. I'm feeling alright, yeah. Everything I do, I'll do for you. I'm gonna love you my whole life long, yeah. I'm feeling alright. Thank you. This next song is another classic song that I love. This song speaks to what's going on in the world today with uh, racial, social, uh, racial and social pandemic that we're dealing with. Oh yes, the pandemic and the racial tensions, the social tensions we see all around us. And to echo 
Sophia's poem called Wake Up. The song is called Wake Up Everybody by Helen Melvin and the Blue Notes. Wake up everybody, no more sleeping in bed. No more backward thinking, time for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There is so much hatred, disease and poverty. Wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. I know the kids will listen to what you have to say Cause they're the ones who's coming up and the world is in their hands So when you teach the children, teach them the very best you can Yeah, yeah The world will get no better Yeah, if we just let it be Na 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 the world won't get no better, yeah. We gotta take it then, just you and me. Uh, mm -hmm. You and me. Mm -hmm. Wake up all the doctors, treat the old people well. They're the ones who suffer and they catch all the hell. Cause they don't have much very long until the judgment day. So would you make them happy before they pass away? Or wake up all the builders, time to build a new land. I know we can do it if we all lend a hand. Cause the only thing we have to do is put it in our minds. I know we can work out. If we do it every time, oh, the world won't get no better. Yeah, if we just let it be, na 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 na. The world won't get no better. Yeah, we gotta take it there, just you and me. Yeah. You and me. We gotta wake up, everybody. We gotta wake up, everybody. Ooh, wake up, yeah, everybody. We gotta wake up, everybody. The world will get no better, yeah. If we just let it be, na 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 na, the world won't get no better. Yeah, we gotta take it there, just you and me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You and me. Yeah. Yeah. Peace, y'all. Peace and love. Thank you. As I hear Con um, Carlos' song, Wake Up, I am reminded that as a people, as a community, okay, my mic is unmuted. Could anyone hear me? Okay. So Carlos' song remind me, reminds me that as a community, as a people, that we need to wake up, we need to take action, and we need to act now. So thank you for that, Carlos. Um, at this time, we had um, a glitch in our program earlier with the um, Lift Every Voice. So I thought uh, we're gonna actually queue that up. Um, for those who missed us at the beginning, who joined us late, Lorraine Harris, uh, she's a songwriter, educator, uh, musician, et cetera. She, uh, so I'm not gonna go over that, you can watch it. 
So we're gonna play Lift Every Voice that she did specifically for the region. So if we can get that cued, that'll be great. So as we reflect on the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice.
Thank you. When I first heard that song, I had goosebumps. Lorraine has a marvelous voice. Um, at this time, I'm, I was just giving you the time to process that. Um, lift every voice. And I think it's important, although it's Black History Month, and we talk about as a people that we need to take action. We know that as a community and as a society that in order for us to really tackle um, social injustices and achieve social justice, that everyone has a part to play. At this time, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna do a panel discussion, but first we'll hear, uh, we're gonna have each of the panelists uh, do a presentation and then we're gonna allow uh, individuals to send questions through the chat that we will be asking. Uh, we'll ask the um, panelists. So the first presenter that we have is Yasmin Smith. She is representing Kind Minds Family Wellness today. Yasmin is an African Canadian registered clinical and social school social worker whose work focuses on supporting children, adolescents, and parents in the area of mental health and well-being. She works with children and teenagers struggling with issues such as anxiety, depression, self-harm, and social behavioral challenges, which include emotional regulation and ADHD symptoms. Yasmin obtained her Bachelor of Social Work degree from the University of Waterloo and her Master's of Social Work from Luria, Wilfrid Luria University. Yasmin is one of the Afro Afrocentric counselors at Kind Minds Family Wellness who utilize this culturally grounded style of counseling to black identifying service uh, recipients. Yasmin, please welcome Yasmin. Yasmin, I think you have to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, let me just make sure. Can you hear me? Yes, Yasmin, we can hear you. Okay. No, I can't hear you. <laughs> just on a second. Can you, is it, can you hear me speaking now? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you today to engage in our Black History Month celebration. As mentioned, my name is Yasmin Smith and I'm a child and youth mental health clinician. And I will be sharing with you some tips and on supporting our children and youth during this double pandemic. So how are our children doing? In the spring of 2020, the American Psychological Association declared that black Americans were facing a double pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic where people of color are dying at higher rates, as well as experiencing an anti-Black racism pandemic in the form of police brutality and murders. In November of 2020, the Evidence Exchange Network published a research snapshot based on Fante Coleman and Jackman Best's journal article entitled, Barriers and Facilitators to Ac Accessing Mental Health Care in Canada for Black Youth. The report noted that Black youth experience barriers at multiple levels of care, including longer wait times, poor access to practitioners, practitioner-related racism, discrimination, and a pronounced lack of available Black professionals in the mental health care sector. Recently, 
Research has reported that the rates of suicide among black children between the ages of five to 12 years old are increasing as they are now more likely to commit suicide than white children. Although this research was based in America, it is troubling and that the two possible reasons for the increase are barriers to mental health treatment and black children who are exposed to racism and discrimination, both at individual and community levels, have higher rates of depressive symptoms compared to other racial and ethnic groups. The psychology department of the University of Georgia offers some advice for helping children and teens cope with racism. Toddlers and preschoolers will not fully understand racism and experiences of discrimination. If parents are experiencing racism, this could influence family routines, parents' moods and feelings, and family interactions. As a caregiver, take care of yourself. If you're struggling to cope with racism or collective grief from the events south of the border, watch for changes in your toddler's behavior, such as increases in irritability, crying or withdrawing behavior, so you can support and help soothe them. Children may notice changes in parents or caregivers' moods and stress. Children may also experience racism themselves, such as teasing and bullying. Have honest conversations with your child about racism. Help them process what they have seen in the news or social media. An age-appropriate answer is better than avoidance of their questions or comments. Adolescents may struggle to cope with fear, anxiety, anger, and sadness stemming from racism. Teenagers may argue more than is typical with parents or withdraw. Do your best to monitor their social media time and content and be curious about what your teenager is seeing. Talk with your teen about racial violence and experiences of racism. Validate their feelings by acknowledging the hurt and anger that they might be feeling. Encourage coping through activities that they find enjoyable and calming, like watching a comedy movie with them or going out for a walk. Collective grief is what happens when a community experiences extreme change or loss. Collective grief can occur due to horrific events, such as war or natural disasters, and it is a type of grief that many Black families are experiencing now. The loss of those who have died due, due to the COVID-19 crisis, the police brutality epidemic, job loss, inability to celebrate milestone events with family and friends, the list goes on. Here are some signs and symptoms of collective grief to watch for in your children. Your child may struggle with a range of negative feelings, including sadness, hopelessness, irritability and anger, or numbness. Some children may become overwhelmed by their feelings and act silly or younger than their age. Your child may have difficulty falling or staying asleep. You might find kids who used to enjoy going to school not wanting to attend either in person or online. They may be struggling to cope with the loss of playing with friends and an active social life. American psychologist Thomas Joyner created a widely referenced interpersonal theory of suicide. Joyner believes that a desire to die is created by two key risk factors, a perceived burdensomeness and a sense of low belongingness. Some risk factors pertaining to Black children and youth include being male, being LGBTQ+, particularly if there's a lack of parental support or harassment and bullying, perceived racism, discrimination, having a psychiatric disorder, having a genetic predisposition of family history of mental illness or suicide, impulsivity, impulsive youth are more likely to act on suicidal impulses, having low self-esteem and a negative sense of self, extensive pressure to be a good student, athlete, or child, romantic difficulties in older, older adults, or involvement with the juvenile justice system. Warning signs may include feelings of being a burden to others, lack of connection, withdrawing from friends and family, depressed, overwhelming sadness, loss of energy or extreme fatigue, loss of interest or pleasure in usual activities, References being dead, either joking about it or talking about one's own funeral, feeling trapped and unable to envision a future, performing internet research on suicide, and decrease in school attendance and or dropping grades. 
Helping children and youth build resilience is critical for their ongoing ability to deal with life's challenges as they grow older. Having resilience does not mean that they will avoid experiencing emotional difficulties in the face of negative life events, but research shows it will help them cope and thrive when faced with adversity. The American Psychological Association offers six key interventions to foster resilience. Make connections. The almost year-long pandemic and social restrictions has made this very challenging, but try to foster connectivity by connecting to friends and family through phone, video chats, and texts. Connecting with others provides social support and strengthens resilience. Maintain a daily routine. Sticking to routines provides structure and comfort to children who need it to feel safe during these uncertain times. Teenagers also benefit from routines, even if they initially resist them. Children's confidence grows when they feel in control of the daily rhythms of their lives. Teach your child self-care. Children learn what they live. If they watch your parents make self-care a priority, they'll end up doing the same as they grow. Nurture a positive self-view by giving them daily validation and affirmations. Keep things in perspective and don't sweat the small stuff. Anxious and uptight parents will have anxious and uptight children. Accept change. We've been asked to do a lot of accepting of change these past 12 months. Teaching your child to pivot and roll with the punches will foster their ability to build grit and show resilience. Lastly, I will show a few helpful resources with you. Uh, the National Black Youth Helpline, Kind Minds Family Wellness, based in Kitchener, Waterloo, the website Therapy for Black Kids, the children's book Something Happened in Our Town, and the author Jerry Craft's book New Kid. Um, I can put more information about each of these resources in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, um, Yasmin, that was very informative. Um, we're gonna go to uh, Trisha Kay, and um, I'm gonna do a bio, and then once we've done that, you guys will have a chance to ask both uh, Yasmin and Trisha Kay some questions. So I'm gonna start with Trisha's bio. Okay. Trisha, uh, and the reason why, so Trisha is coming to us from um, Vancouver, BC. We wanted to show that the impacts that the social pandemic, uh, racial injustices, et cetera, that we're facing is not just locally, but it's across Canada. Um, so Trisha K. Williams has a BA degree in psychology from the York University, from York University in Toronto, Ontario. And she has an MA degree in counseling psychology at the Alder University in Vancouver, BC. Trisha has extensive experience counseling individuals and families and is skilled in treating trauma, anxiety, transitional or career and relational issues. She is also an active community and social services professional who worked for many years as a residential youth worker and co-parenting family law counselor. Trisha is an active advocate for anti-racism that affects racialized individuals and consults with organizations to improve diversity, inclusion, and equity, and foster a more anti-racist approach. Trisha is the owner of the counseling practice called Metamorphosis Counseling, and is the host of a YouTube channel called Meta Transitions. Please welcome Trisha. Hello everyone, it is an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it is important um, to highlight um, our community uh, and I'm so happy to be a part of this Black History Month celebration at the region of Waterloo. It is in community that we thrive and grow. The phrase or proverb, it takes a village to raise a child is literal in that the region of Waterloo is a village that houses a community of Black families. It is important that the village uplift and highlight the strength and resilience of its Black residents for their ability to thrive despite racism, oppression, and systemic disadvantages faced daily. 
In the counseling and psychology community, we've identified um, since last year with the uprising of, um, you know, and the death of George Floyd, um, that systemic racism can contribute to post-traumatic stress. There are two ways that we can help individuals and families. Um, the first is to promote self-care, like Yasmin indicated there for youth and children, to help reduce anxiety. And then to create safe spaces for um, groups to come together to heal. Right. And it's very important that these groups are facilitated by persons um, that are non judgmental and that have similar lived experience. The second thing, as a village, it is also important to champion diversity, inclusion, and equity by having Black representation on your boards, committees, as a way to gain understanding of what the Black community needs. Once these individuals are in place, it is very important to listen to what they have to say. I'll say again, to listen to what they have to say. I urge you to take notes, uh, sit with th those notes for a few minutes, then ask clarifying questions to gain understanding before dismissing. It's very important to accept that sometimes these conversations can be uncomfortable. It is in these, this discomfort that change in perspective can be formed. This transformation, you know, in the way that we think is possible. Um, Ibra, Abraham X. Kendi, in his book, How to Be Anti-Racist, said, the only way to undo racism is to consistently identify and describe it and then dismantle it. A tangible example that I can leave with you today of something we all can do is to plant a seed of encouragement in a Black youth to help them recognize their possibilities. Um, as Sophia mentioned, I host a YouTube channel called Meta Transitions, and I interviewed a deputy mayor from, this, from a city in Ontario. And he shared that he grew up in the notorious Jane and Finch area as a black youth. He also indicated that it was a teacher who encouraged him to take legal studies seriously. He went on to become the lawyer of Toronto Transit Commission and also a deputy mayor of the town Shelbourne. I hope that the short information that I've shared with you today will be um, a way of inspiring you um, to uplift um, Black individuals within our community and to champion representation of Black individuals on your boards and, committee, and committees. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trisha Kay. Um, at this time, we're going to open it up for uh, discussions from the panelists. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Okay. I'm just looking in the chat. Okay, I think we have, hold on. So we do have a question um, from one of our viewers. And they wanted to know what are the black pop uh, population hubs in Canada? I'm not quite sure what uh, they're speaking to. So that person may have to just uh, send it to me again. Um, I'm assuming that they're talking about maybe supports. Both of you guys mentioned the psychological impacts that uh, COVID racism has had um, on racialized and black people. So. If I'm wrong by my interpretation of the question, I'm going to ask that individual to uh, help me to clarify or reframe. But any one of you guys could take a stab at that. That would be great. Uh, I, I, I would, in terms of um, Canada, the National Black Youth Hotline, that, that's a great starting place because it is Canadian wide. I think it's the only one that's Canadian wide. Um, their website has a lot on it, and um, they have a, a toll-free number. 
So that, in terms of looking at things from a Canadian perspective, I, I would kind of um, encourage to go in that direction and start with that website. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Trisha Kay, do you have anything to add? I think Yasmin is right. We don't have a lot of resources that are specifically dedicated to, you know, Black individuals across Canada. So that website, I definitely would agree, would be a starting point, and it could be a jump-off point to your point to specific resources within your municipality or within your city. Thank you for that. Okay, I'm going to jump in since I don't see. Oh, okay, I have a question. What is one lesson non-Blacks can take away um, in helping? So, uh, just, Go ahead. Just, to clarify, <laughs> um, just to clarify, in, in helping in terms of being an ally? Yes. Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, well, I think basically if someone wants to be an ally, um, there is the biggest thing to do is just have curiosity. Um, no assumptions, just curiosity. Um, make sure that um, they're, they're looking at, at whoever it is that they're looking to connect with, um, not as a stereotype, not as an other, but just have curiosity as them as a person. And that's probably the, the first thing to do is just basically find out what is needed by that person, just being curious, no assumptions. A lot of times assumptions are made and uh, um, from, from a lot of the systems that, from, from schools, from um, even from mental health care, um, medical, there's assumptions made and curiosity is a, the best jumping off point I'd say for that. Thank you for that. Uh, Trisha Kay, I know you had something to say. <laughs> I was just going to uh, mention, you know, that it's um, important to, yeah, be open to, you know, what the person's going to share. And I think Yasmin has it correctly there in that being curious is really important. Um, making sure that, you know, you're not coming from an, uh, a place of judgment or, or bias. And you know what, we're all, you know, judgmental and we all have our inherent biases, right? It's important to accept that. Um, as counselors, we've sort of been taught to put that aside. And the only way to put that aside is to accept that we do have them um, and to work on them consistently. Um, and then to be able to say, you know what, this is a possible bias that I have. And by accepting that, it gives us an opportunity to be open to hearing from, from another person. So I would say, you know, start off from that place of it's possible that I may have racist tendencies and that could be hard, you know, it can be hard to have that conversation with yourself and to dig a little deep, right? So I think that that could be a jump off place to say, you know what, if I could possibly have racist tendencies, then, you know, it will be important for me to hear and to listen and to be curious about how I can make those changes. Thank you. We have another question coming in. Uh, for workplaces who do not have anti-racism policies or structures, how do managers and employees bring the conversation that changes the behavior and culture within their organizations? I would say that it would be important to maybe invite, you know, um, someone that is from sort of a diverse uh, diversity, inclusion, equity um, consultation, right? So open up sort of your team to, you know, the possibility of identifying and describing what that could look like, right, within your organization. Um, and then from that place, you can create um, such a policy. But sometimes it's hard to just hear from an employee, right? Um, it could help if you bring in an organization that can do it systematically and look, you know, throughout the whole organization and help uh, everyone to be able to figure out what to do. All right, thank you. Yasmin, would you like to add to that? Um, I, I think I think Trisha Kay covered it beautifully. Um, I think the only thing I'd add is that um, Unfortunately, if there's no data, there's no problem. 
um, a lot of times, the only time change happens is when there's aggregated data. So in terms of a focus group, and that's where I, uh, what Tricia Kay said is bringing in people because um, things change slowly, if at all, but when you have the data and, and organizations are faced with the data, they're forced to do things. Just people speaking their opinion doesn't really change much, unfortunately. Right. And we're seeing now in terms of government, in terms of uh, agencies, that people are looking for um, outcomes, right? Uh, outcome measures. Uh, we have one more, we, we have to wrap up this section, but we have one more question. Um, how, and this is addressed, Pauline is addressing this to everyone. How can we continue to remember and celebrate Black History Month, Black, Black people in Canada beyond his Black History Month? Sorry about that. I, I, I could suggest something. Uh, one of the things I, I'd say is um, we are trying, I know that um, here in, in Ontario, and I think the Toronto School Board, they've actually created a course um, that on anti-Black racism. Um, a lot of it is because so much of this, uh, so much has to happen because the changes need to be systemic. Um, schools, we're starting with the schools, a curriculum, um, there is a big controversy with To Kill a Mockingbird, um, replacing a book like To Kill a Mockingbird with um, one uh, like Just Mercy, which shows black people in a positive light. So I know that um, just from a school point of view, that that can be done. Education can do a lot to change and to make a, a celebration, to make it the norm that black children and youth see black people in a positive role, performing black excellence, on a, on a daily basis, not just in February. All right, thank you so much. So we are out of time for this section. Um, we have told you how if, uh, you can contact uh, both Yasmin and uh, Trisha uh, uh, K. sorry. Um, for those who are just joining us, because I see people are coming in and out, um, if you guys can put your information in the chat, that would be wonderful. At this time, we are going to have, uh, we, kept, we, we said the future is now, but we have not had any young people yet in our program. Right now we have um, a performance by uh, Graham J. Edwards. He's unable to be with us today because he's a student. Um, so we're gonna pull up his video. But before I do so, Graham Edwards performs under the name Ham Grammy. Graham is currently a fourth year student at the University of Waterloo and hopes to have a career in sports marketing or consulting and business development. He is a proud West Indian who is passionate about God, basketball, poetry, and love. Graham says that he loves, and this is Graham's own words, he loves poetry and thinks everything is poetry. From the joyous cry of a child to the anguished cry of a widow. I just want people to be able to look at the good and the bad and all the meaningless things in between and find meaning in all of it. You can contact an, uh, Graham by following him on his Instagram at Ham Grady, Grady, Grady. So at this time, we're gonna pull up his recording entitled Black Is. Carl? Okay, wonderful. Hey guys, my name is Graham Edwards, but when I'm doing my poetry, I go by the name I'm Grady. And today I'm gonna be doing a spoken word for you called Black Is. Right. Black Is. It exists and needs no validation. It is and was and will be. Black is perfect. It's like yin and yang, except it needs no yang. It's like female and male, except it needs no man. It's like black and white, except it needs no tan. We stay making all the dances and all the music. Shout out to God's plan. Black is perfect. So we know Jesus must have been a black man. <laughs> black is beautiful. 
from the brows to the nose to the lips to the hips from the riches of ebony skin to the little black dress she slips over it from the curly black crown of hair to the obsidian colored wig she wears she can rock it and touch it if you dare black is truth maybe that's why they tried so hard to kill me and you we told the black the whole black and nothing but the black but they couldn't handle the black i mean the truth and they still can't handle us just go talk to slavery my great grandmother she'll just say that's why the so-called harmless lies are the white ones my brother but black is strong a lot of it is not by choice but we are forced to be i mean what other choice do we have it was either death or endure slavery strong were the men who were whipped tortured and killed aimlessly strong are the women who were raped and raped and raped carefully strong are we who endure the modern day slavery like father bob said strong are we who emancipate ourselves from mental slavery black is dark and in that there is no wrong isn't it in the dark you were up with friends all night long isn't it in the dark you slipped into his bed and out of your thong who had your back when your heart was broke singing that drake song black is dark and let's be honest we have given the light its meaning all along black is human black is life black is history black can be authority with some elegance and even a little mystery black is who we are it's the pillar of our identity black is the past future and present where we will leave our legacy black is god black is faith black is supreme black is everything black is nothing and black is in between black is i said black is it exists and needs no validation black is and was and will be black is the culmination of all colors and all light black is me thank you Wow, Graham, that was powerful, very powerful poem. And I can relate my favorite parts for that is black is perfect, black is beautiful, black is truth, and black is strong. And as we move on, I'd like to introduce to you um, Dr. Ernest Osei, and I'm just going to read his, uh, his bio and then he'll come on and speak with us. So Dr. Ernest Osei was born in Ghana and completed his BSc his Bachelor of Science degree at the University of Science and Technology in Ghana. He first came to Canada in 1989 to study for his master's degree in health and radiation physics at McMaster University. He completed his PhD in medical physics at the University of Newcastle upon the Tyne in the UK. He returned to Canada with his wife and three children in 2000, and he is a resident of Kitchener. Dr. Osei is currently the director of the medical physics department at Grand River Cancer Society Center at Grand River Hospital, where he leads a team to ensure cancer patients in our community receive the best radiother radiotherapy care close to home. He holds two adjunct professor positions at the University of Waterloo and an associate professorship at the University of Guelph. He actively employs and provides students with learning opportunities in medical physics, teaches medical physics courses at the University of Waterloo and actively involved in cancer research. Dr. Osei gives back to the Waterloo Region community through volunteer work in the Waterloo Region Immigration Partnership as a council member and also as a program coordinator and vice chairman of the Centerville Chicopee Community Association. Welcome Dr. Osei. Will I be able to share my screen? Is my screen visible to everyone? Okay, thank you very much. And um, it's um, really, let me try to, good. It's really an honor to um, join this celebration, which I think is the first time in Waterloo. 
And um, I'm really proud of that, which is very good. I know my bio has been given. I will just indicate I do employ um, co-op students, but um, I've geared this uh, presentation more towards the youth. And uh, I just want to tell them that I do employ co-op students, but you have to be hardworking for me to get you. And I don't want the youth or anyone listening to pay particular attention to my current state. I just brought it up so that it will just whet your appetite. But I want to pull you back to the age of 13, 14, when I was in my um, third year or um, high school. That was the time that my marks were just an average student. And although in primary I was very good, I don't know why I was just an average student. And I think I was just doing what everybody was doing. But at age 13, I decided that no, I came to school to study. And so it must be. And since then, I was studying hard. Most of my friends think I was smart, but not because I spent more time studying and they spend less time playing, um, studying. So out of that, I believe that everyone has within them the potential to succeed, the potential to be what you want to be. It is a God-given potential to me. And it's like a seed that had been sown in the lives of each and every one. And someone has to water the seed. You have to water your seed or someone has to work with you to water the seed for you to see the fruit of that um, seed that has been implanted in you. It may be true that not all of us were born with a silver spoon in our mouth. It may be true that our circumstances may be very tough. Yes, we may grow up in a community, low-income community, or even we are currently growing up in a low-income home or low-income community. Or maybe we have allowed self-doubt and hopelessness in our current situation to be barriers to our sources. It could be true that our current situation is making it less likely for us to graduate from high school or maybe significantly more likely to be exposed to risky, um, involved in risky um, behaviors. It may also be true that the stresses of poverty is interfering with our ability to manage our emotions control our impulses, study, plan, or even problem solve effectively. However, and these struggles we know may undermine our ability to achieve our full potential and break the cycle of poverty in our situation or even in our families. However, it may also be true that you have the potential to succeed, only that you are being ignorant of that golden, uh, of that potential. It may be true that you can dig your own gold and create your own golden spoon and put in the map of your children. It may also be true that if we allow optimism, um, resilience, perseverance to guide us, it might lead us to a better future. It may be tough, but not impossible. It will just require a lot of sacrifice, but it's worth it. It may just be that whatever that we do now, we may not bear the fruit of it, we might not eat the fruit of it, but we lay the ground for our children and the next generation to eat the fruit that we uh, produce at this time. Most often, um, our opportunities and potentials may be derailed by some unhealthy choices and misguided influences in our everyday environment. However, no matter the number of past unhealthy choices made, no matter the current direction that we are heading towards, there is always a new beginning, which is now. There is always a brighter future, which is now. Now is the time to turn around. Now is the time to start making the right and healthy choices. Now is the time to let the pain of the past propel us into a better future. Now should be the start of a new future, a future that we hope for. One guy, um, one man in the Bible um, made this statement. One thing that I do, forgetting what is behind me 
and pressing on towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize. Can we leave the things behind and let the past propel us into a future? We can, it, can be, it can be done. We should let the memories of the past propel us to a better future, but we should not allow the pain of the past pull us deeper into the past for us to miss a better future. It may be difficult, it is very difficult to predict the future that we have, uh, but we have the potential to be able to shape our, uh, our future. The future is um, something that most of us may be afraid of thinking about it, or may be excited of it, or maybe it could be a combination of both. Some people are stressed when they talk about the future, others are relaxed when they look into the future. Whichever way, the future is coming and the quality of that future will depend on what we do now. Your tomorrow, my tomorrow, my beginning, your beginning, your future, my future would all start now. We all know that yesterday is gone. There is no way we'll meet it again. Tomorrow never comes. We always talk of tomorrow, but there is never, there is no tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. Yesterday, tomorrow is today. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today is the time to start fresh, a time to start doing whatever that you plan to do. It is a time to pursue your dreams, a time to start to excel. Today is the time to start to change your direction, a time to start to reach new heights. Today is the time to start to build a better future, not only for yourself, for your kids, and for the next generation. A time to start to shape your future is today. What kind of future awaits you? I give you two futures. One future is what I call the most probable or likely future. This is the kind of future you will have when you do the same things you are currently doing. You think the same thoughts you currently think. Spend the same time with the same people. Stay where you are right now and make the same unhealthy choices. This kind of future is what you get when you just think about a good future, but you don't do anything about it. I propose to you the next future which I call the preferable or the desirable future. This is the kind of future that you get, you desire for yourself, for your kids and for generations to come. This is the future that includes planning and taking steps now to exploit the vast possibilities that life can offer. Some of them we might not know, but it might be frightening, but it could be exciting too. It is the future that is based on our now choices and actions. It is the future that you know what, what you want, what you have planned, what you have, that you have a destination, you know where you are going. If you have a destination, if you know where you are going, you will be able to ask colleagues, you'll be able to ask adults for direction if you know that you are not reaching that destination. This is the future that you know where you are going. One thing that we know is that if you don't know where you are going, if you don't have any destination, you will never get lost in this world. You only get lost when you know where you are going. There is a principle, I'm a physicist, I love physics. And there is a principle in physics that I like. It says that everything stationary, remain stationary, or if it is in motion, will continue in motion unless an external force apply on it. What does that mean in our life? If we apply this to our life, it means that we will be what we are unless we decide to change. If we are in the wrong direction, we will continue in that wrong direction unless we decide to change our actions now. Remember that if you do the same thing over and over and over and over again, you should not 
expect anything different. You should only expect the same results over and over and over again. The youth among us, don't let the situation confuse you when you get there. It's not confusing at all, but be smart. Be smart in this world. There is a statement that Einstein made that if at first the idea isn't absurd, then there is no hope for it. That is what motivates me in my research. I'm doing a lot of research, trying to find better treatment for cancer patients. Currently working with um, some profs in the University of Guelph and Waterloo School of Pharmacy, trying to use gold nanoparticles to treat prostate cancer. At first, when he had that idea, it seems to be absurd. But Einstein encourages us that if idea is not absurd at the beginning, then there is no hope for it. If you want to take a better future, if you want to plan for the better future, and that idea is not absurd, I think there will be no hope for that. I propose eight things. Um, let's try and get them. I'll try and go them through them quickly. Know your operating system. I'm not talking of a computer here. I'm talking about knowing yourself, knowing what you want, knowing what you desire, knowing what your plans are, knowing what you want in your life. If there is one thing that you have to change in your life, if I ask you that question, what would that be? It might be something not, uh, it might not be an achievable or something impossible, but the goal is this thing. Are you really, are you willing to make that change? We know that um, for thousands of years, philosophers and prophets have urged us, um, they talk to people to know themselves. That advice has never been more urgent than in this century, this 21st century. Because unlike those days, we are faced with a lot of competition. All the advertising companies are raising to hack us. They are not hacking our computers. They are not hacking our cell phones. They are hacking the human body. We are living in an era of hacking human beings where they want to tell you who you are. They want to tell you what you need and they want to tell you how to spend your limited resources and time. The second option, the second thing is to plan the future. I don't know about you, but I know that the future that you hope for will not fall on your lap. You have to plan for it. You must set clear goals that are achievable, you must set goals that are challenging, but yet possible. And that you must be in control of your own goals. You shouldn't set goals based on somebody's own. You set your own goals. It is like piloting your own ship. You decide the ship that you want to pilot. It could be a very simple boat, or it could be an expensive yacht. But where the boat will end up depends on where you direct it to be. You are the pilot, you are directing it, and you can direct your boat into a future that you hope for. The, first, the third one is to get organized. Recent research indicates that organizing yourself, your time, and scheduling habits help you to find purpose in life. Organizing your, an ordered life lays the groundwork to pursue larger goals. And if you get a good planner and schedule your work, schedule activities perfectly, schedule time for the priorities of the day way before the day begins, we know that it is true that organization is one of the most effective ways of reducing procrastination. If you are not organized, you keep putting things away. The fourth thing that I will say is that keep routines. Some people may not like it, but I like it. Keep routines and stay on track. Routines to me bring richness to life. It saves time and mental energy. Routines can help you to cope with tasks that you don't like to do. By scheduling them same time each day or each week, 
you develop a habit. You don't have to think about it. It's there. You know that this time, this is what I'm going to do. And it saves you time and energy and for more creative things to do so that you can make decisions of all the more important things. The fifth one that I talk about is that stay motivated and get focused. You need to motivate yourself. At the end of the day, remember that you are the one who is looking for a better future. If your parents, if your friends, if your neighbors motivate you, that is a bonus, but you need to motivate yourself by the things that you do. Focus on the joy of what you, you are working towards and let that joy motivate you through the process of what you want to achieve. A reward that awaits you upon completion can generate some enthusiasm to offset the current unpleasantness. The sixth thing that I'll talk about is that build your skills. Build your skills. In this world of rapid change, young people need the right mix of skills to succeed. Young people everywhere need to develop a greater breadth of skills to evaluate and apply knowledge in ways that meet the new demands of the changing social and economic landscape. Skills such as communication, um, teamwork, critical thinking, creativity, flexibility, have always been work, um, useful for work and life, but they are even more crucial now and the future. Rapid um, advances in technology are transforming the, work, um, the world of work. We are also more connected than ever before. And the um, complex global challenges call for leaders and citizens who are able to collaborate with diverse groups to solve problems. You need to um, develop the ability to be able to deal with change, learn new things, preserve your mental balance, even in an unfamiliar situation. To keep up with the world of 2050, you will need to do more than just inventing new ideas or products. Above all, you must reinvent yourself again and again and again. The seventh one that I talk about is that seek the right information. We are currently faced with unprecedented information revolution. Access to information is increasing at an incredible rate. We are flooded with enormous amount of information and the sensors don't even block it. Instead, they are busy spreading misinformation and distracting us with irrelevant information. It is very easy to swamp the public with conflicting information. And there are so many contradictory information that it is hard to know what to believe. Besides, countless other things are just a click away, making it difficult for us to focus. When you don't enjoy science on the online, when you don't enjoy uh, politics, it is very easy to flip it and start reading celebrity gossips because of information. For us to proceed, uh, progress in the future, now in the future, we need the ability to make sense of the information that we receive, to tell the difference between what is important and what is not unimportant. And above all, to be able to combine the many bits of information into a broad picture of the world that we live in. The last one that I talk about is that use technology wisely. Using technology wisely. Technology isn't bad. We all use it. We have cell phones, we have computers, we use it. But if you know what you want in life, you can use technology to achieve it. If you don't know what you want in life, technology will control you. Let's take um, kids who glue themselves to their cell phones and to computer games. Who is controlling the other? You are controlling the game there, 
but the technology is controlling you. You must control technology. Let technology serve you. I always tell my students, my kids, people that come into my life, that use technology as a tool to achieve your obje objective and not as a toy to play with. Before I end, I said my few conclusion remarks. I just want to show this picture that once I was working in UK with my daughter and my daughter got lost for three seconds and I found out her reading this um, poster. Only ever doing what is expected of you is a tragedy. We need to do more than we do or more than what we are currently doing. And also in whatever that we do, there should always be fun. It shouldn't be like a punishment. You want a good future. You want your, kid, your kids to have a good future. It should be fun working hard towards that. In summary, this is what I say. Do not let anyone despise you by virtue of who you are, what you are, your background, or the color of your skin. But this is a big but. But be, be a good example in leadership, in wisdom, in knowledge, in what you do in your community, in what you do at school, in your math class, in your physics class, even in your gym class, be a good example. And finally, be the one person the next generation would desire to be. Be the person that your kids will look at you one day and said, mom, dad, I want to be like you. Then you have the opportunity to tell them, no, be better than me. Now you know my good ones, you know my mistakes, take my good ones, avoid my mistakes and be better than me. That is the type of person that we should look for from now on, for our kids and for ourselves. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Osei. Everyone has the potential to succeed and um, parents, grandparents, our community leaders can use um, the eight steps that you presented to us to help to motivate our children. Thank you so much. So now we're gonna change it up a bit. We all love a bit of humor, right? That makes the party really good and we're all here for a celebration. So I'm gonna uh, introduce to you Jay Martin. Jay Martin, AKA the Renaissance man is born of Jamaican descent. He is a stand-up comedian, public figure and entertainer who has dazzled, sold out audiences with his top-notch comedic stylings across Canada, United States and the Caribbean. Jay has soared to the top of his game, drawing from his own personal life experiences as he takes his audiences on a comedic journey every time he hits the stage. As one of the most sought after comedians and event MCs in Toronto, Jay Martin has started, has shared the comedy stage with Jamie Foxx, Russell Peters, Eddie Griffin, Tommy Davidson, and Cedric the Entertainer, among many other notables. He has also been the opening act for musical icons such as LL Cool J, Faith Evans, Brian McKnight, SWV, Barris Hammond, and Morgan Herridge, just to name a few. Jay has also produced and executed high quality entertainment events over the years, including Jay Martin's Uptown Comedy Series, the infamous Bucket Pocket, sorry, Bruck Pocket Party, Trinidad versus Jamaica Mother's Day Special, and the all-inclusive Premier Par Day Party, the experience by Jay Martin, to name a few. Jay maintains a solid presence in the community as a positive role model, frequently making personal appearances and volunteering at various charity and fundraising events. He routinely, routinely performs and delivers inspirational and motivational speeches at his high schools for nonprofit and community led events at a, and at youth detention centers as part of his community outreach. Among his many accolades, Martin has received a Juno Award and Arts and Entertainment Award from the United Way of Peel, Count, Peel Village Yuck Yuck New Comedian of the Year Award, the Halifax Comedy Festival Award, and is a three times 
Urban Comedian of the Year recipient. Jay is a seasoned writer who has contributed to many comedy writing rooms for television and movie products. Sorry, projects. You can book Jay Martin and he can be reached at www.jmartinent.com. Take it away, Jay. You have to unmute, Jay. Okay, so you guys can't hear my music? <laughs> I'm changing the vibe a little bit because I want people to know it's Black Future Month and History Month. Yes. I'm changing up the vibe. Sorry, doctor. I love your points. I just got to bring up the energy a little bit before we go. All right. So we're going to get into some jokes. Thank you so much for having me. What an informative group. All the other speakers and performers were amazing. Um, I'm hoping you guys are still with me. Snap your fingers on your screen if you got a little bit of energy so we can get this laugh thing going. Good. Good. I'm happy, man. This is the new norm, though. Wow. What is happening during this pandemic? It's like we are in an episode of Black Mirror. Things are happening that we are not used to. I mean, it's been like 12 months of this, and I've enjoyed maybe like 12 days of this. To be honest with me, this entire pandemic needs a washout. Yes, I said it. It needs a washout, a cleansing, a detox. This is what the whole virus needs. Oh, my gosh. But people, let's be truthful. In this year, we've learned a lot, right? We've learned a lot this year. Besides the point, we have learned that Black lives matter, and it's true. We've heard it, but it's true. Black lives do matter. I mean, they do. Like, we are tired of being just the chocolate chips in the chocolate chip cookie. Every once in a while, we want to be the whole cookie. Ain't nobody trying to eat a chocolate chip cookie without the chocolate chips. Every once in a while, we want to be the Oreo cookie, just two black guys and maybe a light skin thing in the middle. I'm just joking. But we're here to have fun. Uh, I learned of everything. You can be anything you want to be in 2021. Yes, this is what we do. We can be anything we want to be. So I want everyone who's watching, anyone who's listening to know that I, Jay Martin, I identify as slim. Yes, on your screen, I look a little bit thicker than you expect, but I identify as slim. I can be anything I want to be. Yes, yes. I called my doctor and said, yo, what's going on with me? He goes like, no, you have put on some weight. I go, man, I got to do that. I got to identify as slim. I got a little bit bigger. So anybody who has put on a little bit of weight, um, my doctor gave me some advice. And to be honest with you, I lost 2.5 pounds on this advice. So you guys might want to try it yourself. It's involving taking a smoothie. So each morning I wake up, I take a smoothie and it makes me feel better. And I've lost weight with this smoothie. So anyone out there wants to try it, you can try it on your own. It is the kale and oxtail gravy smoothie. Yeah, it, it fills up your belly in the morning and runs your belly for the rest of the day. <laughs> run belly! Anyway, I said run belly. Yes, I'm kidding. You know what? You can't identify as anything you want to be. You know what's funny? I noticed in the United States, there was a lady that identified as a black woman who was a Caucasian woman. You might've heard of her. Her name is Rachel Dozel. And she went to the University of Howard University, a predominant black university on a scholarship. And when they found out that she wasn't black, they were upset with her. But then she said, I'm gonna sue you guys if you get rid of the scholarship and they gave it to her. But here's the bigger picture. She went on to be the leader of the NAACP. And as a white woman, she fought for black rice, which is something I'm very proud of. The fact that she did that was something that made me proud. But what I wasn't proud of was after she became a woman that did hair symposiums. Now that's where I think we put the buck down because a white woman doesn't know anything about black hair. I'm gonna make it clear. I'm gonna show you an example. Number one, if she did not sit down between a mom or an auntie's leg on Sunday night with her head caught this way, getting braided for an hour and a half, she don't know nothing about black hair. Sorry, Caucasians, it just doesn't work. Number two, okay, if she's never experienced a hot comb burn on the back of this ear or this ear or this neck, she doesn't know anything about black hair. And if the comb in her bathroom, number three, is not missing four teeth, <laughs> come on, folks. See, I see y'all laughing. Y'all know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Because real black combs are missing teeth. That's simply put. That's exactly it. Oh, my gosh. I am Jamaican-Canadian, so I'm Jacadian, and I'm proud of this. You know what I mean? I have family from Jamaica, which means, by definition, okay, it means two things. Number one, it means that we believe that you can solve any health issue 
including Corona, with either peppermint tea or ginger ale. These two <laughs> can cure anything. I've seen people with cancer burp off the, the gas of cancer by just having mint tea. The fact that I'm Jamaican also means that though I'm looking at you and I may like you, my spirit can't take you. There's two different people here. We get those two dynamics. Yes, that's the mere method. People ask why I do comedy. I'm gonna tell you guys truthfully, I'm not trying to show off people of Waterloo and all the viewers. I did comedy because I wanted to travel the world and see it in its splendor. And I don't wanna show off or brag, but since doing comedy, I've got to see wonderful places. Places like Brampton, Ajax, Pickering. I even went to Barry. That was awesome. When I went to Barry, there was a room full of people, but there was only one black man in the audience. Yeah, and his name was Barry. I was like, really? Barry from Barry? Can you believe this? <laughs> but I love it. I love it. I try to do comedy so I can do things. I miss restaurants. I'm going to be straight up. People with this pandemic, people are like, what do you miss? I miss going out and ordering a meal and sitting down and enjoying it with my family. And I'm not going to lie to you, right before the pandemic, I would sit there and they were a little understaffed, so the meal would take longer. But I'm going to show you where my black side came out. I would want the meal to take longer because that means that they would have to give me a discount on the bill because it's expensive. Because I'm not going to lie to you, black people, we're not being, rich, we're not being cheap, but so, some of us do like a discount. It's different than our Caucasian counterparts. They, they, they don't want discounts. They want answers. Excuse me. They want answers. I'm quite for it real. You guys should take a discount once in a while. If the food is half price, take it. Don't be like, excuse me, we need answers. Take the discount. <laughs> These jokes are writing themselves. I love it. I'm having fun though. I'm having fun. But I want to say something to you guys. Some of us are in here and we're suffering. We are. We're in our house. We're eating the same food. We're trying to get things done and we're suffering. We want to get out and do things. And I'm going to tell you what you're suffering from. Here we go. It is a disease that's plaguing our people. And this is my commercial advisory to anyone who is suffering from this. Here we go. Are you suffering from sleepless nights, bloodshot eyes, continuous Instagram thumb? Has your screen time increased to more than eight hours a day? Do you find yourself going through WhatsApp checking for marks? and go down people's Facebook looking for comments and likes? Well, you may be either too fast or nosy or suffering from VF, virtual feelings. Virtual feelings affects every four in 10 people in this time of quarantine. If you are suffering from virtual feelings, please contact your doctor or physician immediately. He or she subs will subscribe to a new drug called Kawhi Am I Like This? Kawhi Am I Like This is two drugs combined into one pill. One with mind your own business and two McCann Tech It. Both pills are combined to make one, <laughs> one medication that could save your life. Choir You Like This has been recommended by the Canadian Health Association and it helps to curb your need for virtual feelings. Kawhi My Like This can be taken with coconut, rum, ginger ale, poutine, potatoes, and roti. Do not take Kawhi My Like This while operating heavy machinery, or it may drive you and people crazy. Side effects for Kawhi My Like This are yelling at someone, don't touch me, I don't know you. Diarrhea, insomnia, reasons to not sleep. Please, take Kawhi My Like This today. It will mind your business for virtual feelings. You can get Kawhi My Like This at Shoppers Drug Mart, even though their prices are too teeth. You can go to Walmart or anywhere to get them. Why am I like this? The way to curve your virtual feelings. I know you guys are dying because I'm dying. Come on, snap some fingers for Kawhi. Am I like this? <laughs> <laughs> Let me turn off my system. Oh my gosh. I wrote that for, for people. We're suffering from virtual feelings, man. Um, before I actually wrap up to go, I mean, this has been a fun group. I hope y'all had some fun. Fun. I know it's been so informative to uh, the city of Waterloo. I would like to thank you for going out and having us an opportunity and a platform to talk about the diversity of our Black history and our Black future, because I think it's really important. And I think you guys have all learned something today about the cultures. You've gotten music, poetry, comedy, the doctor, and just informative reasons why we feel so proud of us. And we thank you for celebrating us for these 28 days that we have this month. But Black History Month isn't just a month. 
It is a year, it is a life, it is a ritual, and we all need to embrace it. So I hope you all enjoy it. And if you want some more comedy, you can check me out. I wanted to keep with the timeline so that my girl Sophia can finish up and get some stuff in. But thank you all for having me. Please, please follow me on Instagram. Not because you want jokes, but because I need 10,000 followers and I only need 20 more left. <laughs> Just joking. Follow me on Instagram, J Martin Comic. Thank you so much for having me, the wonderful city of Waterloo. Thank you very much, Jay. As usual, you're wonderful to hear. And I was that dead with laugh. So Canadians say LOL, we say DWL, dead with laugh. So thank you, Jay Martin. Um, what? Thank you everyone who stayed on from beginning to end. Um, on behalf of the Black History Committee and the Equity, Inclusion and Human Rights Unit, um, I would like to thank, and the participants, I, I would like to thank everyone for attending uh, the region's first uh, Black History event of this sort that we've done. Um, there has been a lot of hard work. We thank our communications team. We thank all, everyone who spoke, um, our, our, our audience, and for those who supported us. As Jay said, let's not just remember Black History Month or Black History Month and Black issues during Black History Month, but may we look at celebrating all people all through the year. Everyone have a great day. Take care.
child, I was still able, able. to pick myself up and carry on. It's been a long.